Hey, it's Mike here, and today, hair loss. I'm finally talking about this after it's been requested like 50 times, but in particular, we're gonna be talking about plants that can be used as a treatment for hair loss and the research behind those plants. So now we're not covering hair transplants, we're just covering hair plants. But it's super interesting because there's a lot of research on this topic and in many times they even put those plant-based products directly up against the main leading drug or treatment or whatever it is. We have a bunch of good randomized control trials and some not as good studies behind other ones, but it's worth looking at anyway. And we're also gonna touch on mechanisms for the most common type of hair loss, how that works. We're gonna talk about men as well as women here because for women this is an issue of course as well. So let's just go. Start by saying I'm lucky to still have my hair. I have really messy hair so that people no longer constantly say that I have a wig because my hair doesn't match my beard. No wig would be this messy, so nobody can be tricked now. <laughs> and when my dad went bald young, my mom's dad, the one you get it from, kind of slowly lost his hair until 60. So I'm like, what's a safe, natural thing I can do to maybe slow any natural hair loss that might occur for me as I age and with most people as they age? Because there is gonna come a day where I probably will be visibly more bald on camera here. Will I lose all my followers then? I hope not, but will everybody blame it on a vegan diet? Yes, but I do wanna say, I don't think people should be shamed for being bald or having having hair loss regardless of their sex. But even if you take the shame out of it, a lot of people just wanna have more hair. So we're gonna talk about that. And I know you want me to just start rattling off a bunch of plants so that you can be intellectually satisfied and on and on. But first, it would really help if we just touch on the mechanisms of how things work, especially with androgenic alopecia, the most common alopecia for men and it happens in women as well. And we still need to acknowledge the other causes of hair loss as well, and there are a ton. I mean, we're talking about things from fungal infections of the scalp and dermatitis on the scalp to thyroid issues and really stressful events leading to that short-term hair loss known as telogen effluvium. We also have things like pregnancy and nutritional deficiencies, which we'll cover briefly, but let's just get back to the main one, androgenic alopecia or androgenic hair loss. As this study put it, male androgenic alopecia is known as MAGA. That explains the hats. I'm just kidding, we don't need to make this political. Let's just move on. But let's get to that main culprit here, which is the compound DHT or dihydrotestosterone. It essentially shrinks your hair follicles on your head, effectively choking off the hair over time, or as this study put it, continuous miniaturization of affected hair follicles. So DHT is basically a shrink ray for your hair. Honey, I shrunk my hair. I was aiming for the kids, but I missed. What? Child support is expensive. In men, 70% of that DHT comes from testosterone directly being broken down. And that brings me to a really important player in this. And that is 5-alpha reductase, which is an enzyme because it ends with A's. In the case of women, it's more or less the same, except the base for that testosterone is usually androstenedione, which is a very hard word to say, or DHEA, both of these hormones that are turned into testosterone and then also broken down by that 5-alpha reductase. So either way, similar process. And you may have seen my whole video on PCOS, and that's a case where testosterone goes higher in women and for many women, it can turn into hair loss that way as well. And so it makes sense. It's through this DHT mechanism. And beyond hormones, there's a bit of a debate around how much blood flow plays a role. Either way, it's good to have adequate blood flow. And we've known for 30 years that men who have male pattern baldness have about two and a half times lower blood flow to their scalp skin. The question becomes, was it some lower blood flow that led to that hair loss or was it that you're not feeding so much hair anymore, you don't need as much blood flow to your scalp. Either way, interesting fact I wanted to include, and it becomes a little bit relevant with these plants. So let's just get to those, the first of which, some of you probably would have guessed, is rosemary. And yes, it is the king here. It has the most research by far. But we're gonna back up again. Don't you love backing up? Because to understand the most important research here, you have to know what is called minoxidil, which is the active ingredient in Rogaine. You may have heard of it, it's super popular. There's probably a, a Joe Rogan joke in there that I don't need to make. Anyway, even as of 2019, like this study mentioned, the mechanism is still not fully understood. You know, we don't know exactly how it works. It does appear to be a vasodilator. That's why it became a hypertension or high blood pressure medicine initially. And so maybe it has to do with some blood flow, but we also know that it is a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, or at least it down-regulates the genes 
of 5-alpha reductase creation, according to this study. And yes, it does work from this study. Minoxidil showed a remarkable increase in hair growth. So we know this works. So that is the baseline comparison here, at least for this study, this randomized control trial of 100 men with androgenic alopecia. They compared daily rosemary oil lotion to 2% medoxidil. And while nothing happened at the three month mark, things started happening at six months. Quote, both groups experienced a significant increase in their hair count at the six month end point compared to baseline in three months. Yes, you heard that right, increased hair count. That doesn't mean everyone's gonna go from full bald to like full head of hair here, but very notable. It's also worth mentioning that the rosemary group had less scalp itching. But either way, lower side effects, which brings me to, you know, are the Rogaine side effects really bad? Well, they don't seem to be super scary here, but one of them is, increased hair loss. The studies demonstrate that you're gonna be better off on average, but you know, those are at least side effects I'd rather not worry about having. So how might rosemary be working? Well, in general, from this paper, rosemary has a bunch of properties like antioxidant, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and also enhances microcapillary blood flow. So who knows if that plays a role? But what is the most legit mechanism here probably has to do with that 5-alpha reductase. And I'm not a huge fan of mouse studies, but from this one, it reduced the 5-alpha reductase activity dramatically. They did two different doses. At the higher dose, it was 95% lower, essentially. So yeah, they called it a, quote, promising crude drug for hair growth. Hey, you over there with the dump truck, buy me. You don't need a prescription and you can put me places other than just the scalp, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Why are you turning me around? Very crude, makes me think twice about using rosemary on my body. Anyway, how would you actually use this practically? I wanna cover this for each one. And it appears that people are adding it to shampoo. The study was on a lotion. It's hard to say if you have a really sort of stripping shampoo that might remove the oil, but it might work for most. There's a bit of debate on how much to use. And I tried calculating it myself because the study said the lotion was 3.7 milligrams per milliliter. And I landed at about seven and a half drops of the oil per 100 milliliters. So if you have like eight ounce bottle of shampoo, that would be 15 drops. If you have a 16 ounce one or one that's twice that big, that would be 30 drops. That's not an exact science and check my math and I will pin your comment if I'm wrong. Next up is Rice Rice Baby. You know we love rice on this channel. <laughs> anyway, there's a bunch of good information on just applying rice products to your skin. I might even do a whole video on that, but you might be familiar with that town in China that got the Guinness Book of World Records for having the longest hair. Well, they attribute that to their use of rice water, in particular fermented rice water. So it's made its way into a ton of different products, but if you're actually looking for rice water studies, I couldn't find any good ones at least. However, there is some compelling data around the use of rice bran extract that is then watered down which one would really be better? I don't know. But we have the studies on the rice bran extract, and that brings me to this study that was funded by the South Korean government. They essentially administered that diluted rice bran extract to human hair root cells in a Petri dish. And they looked at two things that are created by those hair root cells, collagen one, and fibronectin, and the results were, type one collagen increased quite dramatically, fibronectin increased by about two and a half times. It's also worth mentioning that interleukin one, which is an inflammatory cytokine, decreased by a notable amount, and that is important. That's because interleukin one might impede hair growth, and so you want that lower inflammation. Anyway, their conclusion was, quote, hair loss prevention and hair growth enhancement can be expected when this rice bran stuff is applied as a cosmetic product. That might be a little overreaching there, uh, and maybe lost in the language gap, but most researchers don't say things are expected like that. Thankfully, we have another study, which is actually a randomized control trial in entire humans, not just a Petri dish. It was also funded by the Korean government, so they had some interest here. Anyway, they used that same type of rice extract watered down. They had 50 people with androgenic alopecia. 22 of them were women. And the results were that they had an increase in hair density and hair diameter, but 
just in the male subjects. Which I will say is really frustrating because when I look at the data, you can see that those women are improving just as much. However, the placebo group for some reason also crushed it. So there's no statistically significant difference and no statistically valid claim can be made. Is it that the placebo hair effect for women is more effective? I don't know. Either way, we need a bigger study, but they did something that was interesting where they had experts actually blindly judge overall hair condition. And by blindly, I mean, they didn't know who received the treatment or not. And they could see that yes, it was better in men. And again, it improved so much. It improved more in the women, but because that placebo group did well, there was no result, but let's just say all of the women in this study, their hair was getting better. Anyway, here's a pretty compelling before and after of a male subject from this study. I will say it looks like they zoomed out a little bit, making that spot look a little bit smaller anyway, but still there is an increase in hair growth, apparently. So how would you actually use this stuff? Thankfully, there's been a bunch of hype around rice and you can just directly buy those fermented rice water products. Again, those weren't what the study is on. And you can also just buy your rice bran oil. And the study itself actually applied four milliliters of that rice bran solution twice a day. And that solution was only 0.5% of the rice bran extract. So we're talking very little. You know, I did some math. I hope it's right because a full dropper is a milliliter. And so 0.5% of four milliliters is like one drop. Maybe you need to use more. Someone can check the math. All right, next up we have saw palmetto extract. This is from the berry of this little dwarf tree that grows in the southeastern United States. And yeah, there seems to be quite a few studies and thankfully there was a review that looked at all of the best ones. They looked at five randomized control trials and a couple other studies, mostly for androgenic alopecia. We're talking oral or topical application and quote, 60% improvement in overall hair quality, 27% improvement in total hair count, increased hair density in 83.3% of patients and stabilized disease progression among 52% were noted. That being said, because a lot of the studies weren't very big and for other statistical reasons, they say that these results should be taken with caution. Speaking of caution, I should just mention right now that this is not advised for pregnant or breastfeeding women. And, and while this says it's well tolerated and so forth, obviously consult your doctor when it comes to all this stuff, especially when it's oral anyway. Back to the mechanism here. Saw palmetto, again, is an inhibitor of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. It seems like that's sort of what pretty much all this stuff does. But one of the studies that that first saw palmetto review looked at was a comparison between saw palmetto extract and finasteroid slash propecia, which is also a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. The propecia did better. The finasteride did better. It was increased hair growth score in 68% of people on that drug, but then only 38% of people on saw palmetto extract, which is still quite a lot. And that again brings us to side effects because usually people don't want, and this isn't guaranteed, but they generally don't want a loss of interest in sex when they're trying to regrow their hair. I mean, when your whole goal is to attract a mate by increasing your plumage, you don't want things to go like, I've been grooming my hair for months and now that I've got you in the bedroom, you know, maybe, maybe we should just talk. How about, about my beautiful hair? <laughs> Thankfully, saw palmetto is pretty easy to get a hold of in oral form and also in terms of oil, and those will be linked below as well. And next up, we have pink and blue ginger. And this one is interesting because, well, it is technically part of the ginger family, which is quite large. It's also actually related to turmeric. It's in that particular curcuma genus, and it's technically called curcuma aeruginosa or something like that. It also appears to be a, you guessed it, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So it's again gonna stop that DHT from forming from testosterone. And the active ingredient in it does appear to be curcumin, which is also that active ingredient in turmeric, which gives it so many benefits for inflammation and on and on. And that brings me to this study in a random Thai journal, which I will have you know is officially a tier one journal, says right there. <laughs> I've never heard of it. 
Anyway, they compared a 10% pink and blue ginger extract to 5% minoxidil, that Rogaine, and they found at three months, the pink and blue ginger had less of the shrunken little baby hairs than the actual minoxidil group. And that's key because again, it's that DHT that slowly shrinks down that hair follicle, which gives more of those baby hairs. So that's a sign of hair loss. You know, so take that finding as what you will. And I, I love this picture. It's the before and after, but like, come on, look at the brightness difference on those. Like, come on, scientists, you gotta be a little, a little sneakier than that. But let's move on to this randomized control trial, which did an interesting thing. They compared not just the Rogaine or Minoxidil, they compared that plus the ginger. So they had several different groups and the result is there seems to be a synergistic effect that the Minoxidil plus the pink and blue ginger created more hair density than the other ones, as you can see on this chart, it's the winner. They also have another before and after, which, you know, maybe the hair was just longer. Maybe it's actually better. I don't know, they're pulling out all the stops for these pictures. But another mechanistic reason could be that curcumin is also lowering that interleukin one, that inflammatory cytokine, which again impedes hair growth potentially. So that's a double whammy. But here's the major problem with this one. As cool as all of this is, I can't find this stuff online. I can't buy it easily. I can't find pink and blue ginger. I can't find it under that official species name. So maybe you have a Thai hookup somewhere that can send it in, you know, I don't know, who knows? You know, maybe just taking oral curcumin like from turmeric would help here, but we don't have data on that. So that's shooting in the dark. And again, once you're going oral, don't laugh. Once you do that, you also need to consult your doctor. And again, just, just pretend I'm saying consult your doctor after every sentence. There you go. But that being said, there is generally good safety data as you can read through in this study, which I will link below with everything else. All right, we have an honorable mention here that is clearly lacking data, but we have a study on green tea. They took the active ingredient and yeah, it increased human hair growth in a Petri dish. Fun stuff. I don't know, just brew some extra tea and pour it on your head, or you can just grow all the hair in a Petri dish and just like transplant it. Anyway, in the end, there's a strong case that various plants can help. I mean, we have that randomized control trial on rosemary oil, which is very compelling. I think the randomized control trial on the rice bran extract was also quite compelling, especially for men. I'm sorry that it wasn't a larger study and there wasn't a clear finding on women. It's pretty awesome that the phytochemicals in plants are able to actually inhibit that inhibitor, you know, can actually block some of that DHT from shrinking all of those hair particles with that super evil DHT shrink ray. And that's cool. It's cool to learn stuff. And I will say, since a bunch of people are gonna look up all of these products anyway, I decided to put Amazon affiliate links because if you're looking at them, why not? I'm not gonna make like a ton of money, but I might as well do it. Anyway, I just love sharing the amazing properties of plants. So let me know down below what you think about all this. Have you tried any of these? Have they worked? Did they make all of your hair fall out on your back? Cause that would be good. Anyway, like and subscribe to support my channel and me doing research like this. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Why don't you come over here and let daddy spank that scalp? <laughs>